you might imagine, I'm not exactly prone to loving anything with a third row. Not just because putting me in here is kind of like putting a horse in a cat carrier, but because I just hate big dumb SUVs. But once I manage to bend my parts the right way to get out of it, I actually like this car a lot. This is a good looking three row, and I don't say that very often. Let's go for a ride in the 2010 Lincoln MKT all wheel drive with the EcoBoost motor, and of course, check the tech. Now, to my eye, the MKT accomplishes what Mercedes wishes they nailed with the R Class three rows without anyone saying minivan. They call this one steel blue metallic, and on the inside is a classic black leather. I like the interior of this Lincoln because it's got that, you know, recent Ford mature look. We've seen this in the Taurus, the Fusion, uh, the MKS. Ford's doing some nice cabins these days and luckily putting some good technology within them. Not a whole lot we haven't seen before, but luckily it's good stuff. Here is our 8-inch LCD. You get one of these whether you have nav or not. Obviously, there's no navigation displayed if you get the base car. and It'll show other controls and interfaces for the vehicle. But this nav system is one of our favorites. It's hard drive based, by the way. And we know that because if we go to the media selection, one of our choices is jukebox. And content on it can come from the optical drive, which as you can see, will also play DVDs while you're parked, or from an audio disc you pop in the slot. Single slot here because you've got a hard drive, no need to stack up the discs. And of course, you've got a USB drive here next to your aux jack for thumb drives like I'm using, or for your iPod or your iPhone, just using your standard Apple cable. Now, whether you're listening to your USB drive or your iPhone or your satellite radio or CD or DVD or jukebox or whatever, it's going to come out of one of two audio systems. The base system is just, you know, Lincoln Sound. But what we have here on this car, luckily, is one of our favorite audio systems, which is the THX audio system, THX2 5.1 surround. And that THX sound puts more speakers around the cabin, but most importantly, really advanced digital amplification that I've always thought does one of the best jobs of any of the high-end systems of keeping you from screwing up it. It's a well-policed, well-behaved system that almost never sounds out of shape. And of course, Bluetooth hands-free is also part of Sync, so Sync brings a lot of things together, and that's standard on this vehicle. And of course, on a car in this price class that comes standard with an LCD, you better have a rear view camera, and of course it does. It gives you color-coded zoning as to where you're headed, but it does not give you any kind of trajectory indication geared to the steering wheel angle. Available in a package, and only in a package by the way, is this thing they call the Power Vista Roof. And it's this large panel over the first row that slides back over a fixed panel over the second row. Oh, speaking of that second row, come here. Nice accommodations back here. You've got bucket seats with this full-length console. I mean full-length. It goes from here to the front of the car. And this is a standard arrangement on this vehicle, not some kind of an uprated seating package. Now, this is fun. You've got your cup holders. That's fun. Some stuff. You've got a 110 outlet here, you know, like you have in your house. And, oh, what's this? A little cooling button for fridge or freezer, which lives right here. This is an a la carte option, by the way. Lift the lid, and it's like one of those little hotel ice buckets, but it really works. That's really cold. Now up here, Ford's taking advantage of a couple of the big ideas in automotive engineering right now, which are direct injection and turbocharging. An EcoBoost engine has a pair of little turbos that are optimized for different parts of the RPM range and direct fuel-air mixture injection right into the cylinders at the combustion point. A number of companies are doing this, and many say DI is the big idea right now in combustion motors. Supposedly, that means a V6 will give you V8 power with V6 economy. This is a 3.5 liter V6. We get 355 horsepower, 350 foot-pounds of torque, 0 to 60 and 6.1 out of 4,900 pounds of vehicle. So I can believe the V8 power and performance thing. Unfortunately, the MPG is nothing to write home about. 1622, and in real world, we just plain got 16-ish. The 3.5 liter twin turbo direct injection V6, the EcoBoost motor, tries to deliver on that V8 power from a V6 block marketing line. But the size and weight of the MKT is just a little too much for that. And the 6-speed auto is just a little too in love with top gear as well. That said, the MKT moves well, just not quite as smartly as the MKS sedan does with the same power team. The ride comes off as mostly smooth, and then you think planted, the cabin quiet, and the whole experience makes you wonder, is this really the same Lincoln that makes the Navigator? 
Okay, let's price this big guy. A 2010 MKT EcoBoost all-wheel drive is 50 grand. And by the way, EcoBoost and all-wheel drive always go together on this vehicle. Now, the big package is called the Elite Package for $4,000. That gets you the voice-activated GPS nav, not just a dumb vehicle configuration screen on that LCD. THX2 5.1 surround, that's a winner. Also gets you blind spot detection and the cross traffic alert on the back and that Gigunda Vista panoramic glass roof.